This channel is supported by my online fishing courses at saltstrong.com slash Skinner, as well as my books, including my latest book, Fishing the Edge, Techniques and Tales from Surf, Boat, and Kayak. You can learn more about the books at johnskinnerfishing.com and on Amazon. Hey, welcome back to this in more detail at the end of the video, but I just wanted to show you the outside of the boat um, bef before we fished. Yeah, this is a boat I've admired for many years because um, Jonathan and I used to launch at the same place uh, right on the beach, no cement ramp. I had aluminum boat. He had this boat. And, boy, you know, th this thing is just incredible. And um, so I've been very excited to fish on it this year. And at the end of the video, I'm going to go back and tell you about the specs. But one of the specs is, minus the T-top, this boat is only 700 pounds, which is, you know, when we're launching directly into the sound, whether we have a cement ramp under us or not, uh, the, l the weight is so important. But hey, let's go fishing. We're going to get back to that boat and the specs and things um, in more detail. Okay, we're fishing Eastern Long Island Sound, and uh, I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Come on, I want to use this lead bucket. <laughs> I, I'm thinking we're gonna. Okay, we're in roughly 25 feet of water, very simple rig, um, ounce to ounce and a half bucktail on the bottom, a foot above that. I used, just used a, a 3 0 Gamakatsu bait holder hook. I have four inch gulp grubs on both the bucktail and that teaser hook. Yeah, we're gonna be using it really soon. Good. Nice food. Yeah, he's a shorty, but. Yeah. We're in him. Point eight drift. 18 and a half. Yeah, 18. And our length limit here in New York is 19 inches. The bag limit is three fish per person. I don't have the bow thrust you know? <laughs> yeah. Yep, you found them now. That picks up. Yeah, that's a keeper. I'm in two. Oh, yeah. Thank you. You got one? No, I had a bite. I, I'm good. Now, one thing I failed to mention about this boat, this is a welded aluminum boat, not riveted. Uh, one of the problems with aluminum boats in general uh, has to do with rivets, and uh, this boat will never suffer from that. Short. So one of the questions I get is, when do you use a 4-inch gulp grub, when do you use a 6-inch? So I use the 6-inch when I just am sure that, you know, there's big fish around. This could be uh, certainly any of the ocean fishing I do, uh, Peconic Bay, that sort of stuff. Um, but in a setting like this, Long Island Sound, you know what? A 5-pounder is a really good one. Um, you know, if you really do well, you might get a 7. Um, the 4-inchers the are, are fine. Uh, you know, it's lighter tackle, lighter weight bucktails. Uh, it, it matches the sand eels that the fish are feeding on, so I, I stick with the four inch here. But in the ocean, we're using uh, heavier, larger bucktails. The six inch is perfect. It presents a larger profile for the bigger fish, so that's my reasoning. There you go. You know how I got him? I kind of like dead stick him. You need a net? No. Nah. Oh, we'll just swing those keepers. Oh, what? You sure you don't need a net? Oh, okay. All right, it looked bigger when it was down. Uh, worth, worth measuring. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, now it looks good. That was weird. It literally wasn't aggressive. Yeah, no, I think that one's going to make it, yeah. yeah. All right, so that's two in the box. We're off to a decent start. So when I recorded 
like my first really good underwater video of fluke that was a year i came out here 17 feet of water i could look down and see the jig which wow for here you know that was amazing it's almost kind of like you don't want to see that because then you don't want to fish it's just like if i had to see the fish hit the rig it wouldn't be as fun <laughs> Well, I can tell you casting for redfish in the shallows, you see yeah, that redfish right. coming, Ooh, or or you see them, and then it's like, oh, I got to make this cast, yeah. you know? So this is interesting, John. Zero drift right now. All right, so, so that would tell us that it's so ebb, right? we got slack. Or, or I or think start of the outgoing. I think start of the outgoing, because we have certainly an easterly breeze. So do we keep going incoming? The thing. Um, for this drift, right? Let's go a little. Outcome? Well, if it's really, then I gotta go back the other way. I know, but if we gotta, if we have to. So look, here's something. Can you spot lock it? I can. And then we'll see which way the lines go. That's what we do all the time with Halkius's right. boat. And this way here, we can right determine. Spot all right. So let it let it settle at zero zero, which it sounds like it's probably doing. To me, this looks like it's it's going out. Yeah, it's pushing. Well, no, it's pushing, so it's still incoming. You think? I'm, uh, look at the angle on your line. Uh, hold on. Let the motor really settle us in. I mean, so we're spot locked right now. It certainly isn't going under the boat. Oh, and what's the, you know, what's the. Uh, what is the motor? Which, which way is, is forward on this thing? right the way it is now so that is for Forward. okay yes. so it's pushing into that yes and the line is up and down so i think we got slack right now yeah all right so just cut it and, you want to or, or or do we incoming with the motor yeah yeah i think so because you already lined up for it then next drift we could actually just probably turn it around all right all of that discussion is very important i mean drift is is so important for fluke fishing so which we want to go in the same direction as the water it was hard for us we got a little bit of a breeze we hard for us to figure out you know what direction is that so we spot lock the motor we look at which way the lines are going and then we troll slowly in that direction and trolling if we're going like 0.5 to maybe 1.0 miles an hour with the motor that's about right Point six. okay good Okay, it feels good. Good? Yeah. Yes. Good job. Nice fish. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, yeah. John, nice fish. Yeah. And he, like, very kindly swam right into the net for us. Yeah, I know, but he's still the keeper. I'll, I mean, I'll check him out if you want, but I'm quite sure he's in. Okay, so we've gotten through slack now. A breeze popped up. Um, of course, how the breeze is blowing opposite direction of the current. So we're going to use the trolling motor to push into that. So again, we keep the right uh, direction uh, on the, on the drift or on the troll. There we go. No, I can't tell. No, I don't think so. Short. Spitting up sand eels. Yeah, I think that would be. Yeah, since we're not banging them up here. You know, even if you like, I usually just like stay on this yeah. side of it. And uh, I mean, we we're going back a long ways, but that was, you know, exactly. Yeah. And then we'll be going almost like right into the wind, which will be comfortable for holding the track.
There we go. See you both there. That's another short. Close. Yeah. Well, that's a couple of shorts pretty close together. So. Do we shorten up on that and go through it again, or... I mean, it does seem like it makes... You know, well, we'll keep going, I guess. Yeah. I'm walking a lot of bait. That's good. Is it a fluke? That's a fluke. That's a fluke. Yeah, that's... Huh? Yeah, I, I don't know what I got going here. Big fluke. Oh, yeah. He's a decent fish too. I'll take care of him though. I can Alright, how deep are we? We're good, we're 24. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah, they're right the road here. So when you're using a trolling motor like this, um, you're really using your line to tell you what the right speed is. I just heard Jonathan say, oh, we're going too fast. That's because, you know, he could see that there was a big angle forming in the line. You want just a little slight angle towards the back of the boat, and, um, you know, you just want to tweak your speed in to achieve that without having to use a lot of weight. Oh, that's a fluke. Yeah, that's a fluke. Nice. Oh yeah, it's like instant action down here. But I, I mean, somebody's got me right now. Oh, yeah. As soon as I put down. Net? Okay, good, 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 good. Coming over. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah, way to go, way to go. Gotcha. Beauty. And, oh, I thought I needed to Beautiful. Yeah, this is what they are. Oh, blue fish or bass. Whoa. It's it's not a fluke. Because I, I set the hook and and as it was settling, it got hit, so what is that? It's either a bluefish or a bass. Wow. Uh, near the bottom though, could be probably a striper. Cool. Good. Yeah, let's see what we're gonna deal with here. Very cool. I think it's a bass. It is. Bluefish? Yeah. Or oh, can't quite make it out. Blue, yeah. I got him. Yeah, I got 30. I can. Can you see hook him? No, no, I'm just going to bring him in and I don't uh, keep fishing. And... Can you throw that in the box? Really? Believe it or not, I like it. You're kidding. Okay. They gotta be that size. Oh boy, this is 
all right way to go. <laughs> Don't rush them. I'm gonna throw this in and I've got the net. Feels like a great fish unless it's a snag. Who knows, you know? Oh no, he's nice. Okay. You ready? Yep, bring him over this way. Very nice. Nicely done. All you needed was uh, the, 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 light, the light skinner rod, huh? The light skinner rod. And that was our limit fish. All right, now you get to see this boat riding in a chop. And yeah, this is where it really excels. You know, it's uh, these are uh, made up in the Pacific Northwest, up in Oregon. They're, they're made to you know, just cut through a chop, and that's what it does. You know, we're just flying along 30 miles an hour, nice and comfortably. So when we launch directly into Long Island Sound, I mean, we've got a little dock there kind of to the left, but in most cases, you, you, you can't use it. And the other ones just don't have them, so you've got to pull the boat up on the beach and... Uh, yeah, so this is where we want aluminum. You know, we, we don't want to drag fiberglass up on the beach. And, of course, like I mentioned, the weight is so important. And, yeah, this is 700 pounds without the T-top. It's just amazing. Let's take a look at the what makes it possible. I mean, Jonathan will just drag this up. You've got a little bit of cement ramp there. He'll just drag that up right up on the ramp, and he can do that because... This boat has extra protection where you need it most if you're going to drag it up on the beach. It's, um, first of all, the aluminum on the bottom of the boat is actually thicker than on the sides but then you've got this extra protection right on what you might call the keel right there um, and yeah so that means you can you know drag it up on the beach and not give it a second thought okay so here's the the Klamath hope I said that right uh, website um, this is the boat with the optional t-top and yeah so here's the specs and it, it's this one here so 18 uh, feet 4 inches what really gets me, and of course this is without the T-top, but 700 pounds, that is very light. It's actually um, 150 pounds lighter than um, my 16-foot, 4-inch Grumman. So, yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, and there's a, a look with the T-top. Um, yeah, so, you know, what do these things cost? I, I really have no idea. Um, I did go out online and found, I thought this was interesting, this is just a, a brand-new 16-footer very um bare bones uh you know and yeah the prices with a trailer is almost fifteen thousand dollars for that 16 foot bare bones with a trailer so yeah uh yeah, very very interesting by the way besides owning the cooperage restaurant in baiting hollow jonathan is uh, the inventor and the owner of no faux pot pies and these things are just delicious and uh yeah they're they're really getting around now this is their uh website nofopotpies.com and their store locator shows that they've got uh, 20 locations now so yeah check them out these things are excellent okay i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please hit the like button if you're not already a subscriber please subscribe and hit that notification bell check out my online fishing courses at saltstrong.com skinner and don't forget my books and you can learn more about the books at johnskinnerfishing.com and on amazon